Hello and welcome to Islamic Awakening, a program that delves deeply into the issues affecting both Islam and Muslims today. I am your host, Ahmed Hanif. Today I'm asking Professor Tariq Ramadan, how can Muslims respond to the contemporary challenges of modernity without losing their identity? Recent global events have renewed questions and concerns about the compatibility of Islam with Western society. And it's against this background that Western societies perceive Islam as being opposed to modernization because of the absoluteness of divine revelation in Islam. But some Muslims feel that Islam can embrace modernity and it has to reclaim an Islamic heritage that has enriched humanity and contributed to its growth, the type of Islam that places emphasis on reason, acquiring knowledge, and representative politics. But there are some within the community who view modernity with suspicion, seeing it as a Western concept that threatens Islam. So given the challenging times Muslims are living in, what can Western Muslims do to balance faith and modernity? And I think it's a very appropriate subject for us to touch on today. What, first of all, do we mean by modernity? Yes, I, I think that uh, uh, we have to start with this. We have to really start with the terminology because very often when it comes to um, us as Muslims and we have to respond to some of the uh, Western questions, we have to stop and say, well, okay, hold on. Let me question the question. So right. what, do, what do you mean exactly by this? Because there is a difference, for example, in terminology. Modernity as a, a, a word, a concept, means to live with your time, to be updated. So, for example, you use your uh, philosophy of your religion or your spirituality and you have the right or the updated answer to the question of our, your time. But this should be, and so we mean that there are different ways of being modern and to translate modernity. It's different from an ideology of modernism, which is the Western answer to how do we live with our time. So it's a specific answer. So very often we are confused. What do you mean by this? What do you mean exactly by modernity? If, for example, you come to some of the sociologists and philosophers, they would say, look, let us come with the features of modernity. The first one is the primacy of the individual. The second is reason. The third is freedom. The fourth is uh, equality. And some are asking, uh, are adding progress. And others, democracy. And others, secularization. So you can see mm. here that there is a a process in the West, which was saying modernity in the West means separation between uh, the authority of the church, as it was during the Middle Ages, and the state. It's part of uh, modernity. Why? Because in fact, it's because of this process of secularization that you got first the primacy of the individuals, reason, progress, freedom, and equality. So, so, in fact, the last principle explains all the others. But this is the West. This is a specific history that has nothing to do with the Islamic civilization because uh, uh, in the time of uh, 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 this relationship that we had in Islam between faith and reason, we have sciences, architecture, arts in the Middle Ages. When, when in the West there was a contradiction in uh, the Islamic civilization. This was a mutual nurturing process that faith was helping reason and reason was helping faith because we understand that Iqra means read, means knowledge is the way forward. No deep faith without wide and deep knowledge. So we don't have the same history. So if we don't come with questioning the terminology, we end up responding to the question, the only way for you to be modern today is to be westernized. Mm. That's wrong. That's not going to work. And I would say, no, what we need now, it's from where we are. And me, as a Western Muslim, I'm a Western Muslim. So I live within the West. I'm questioning some of the features of what we call modernism mm. or the Western modernity by saying, for example, I don't have a problem as a Muslim with individual. 
as the primacy of individual. Why? Because what I have in Islam is وَقُلُّهُمْ أَتِهِمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَرْضًا One day you are, will be, you are going to be alone in, before God and you will respond. But I have a problem with individualism. So my problem is in, not in the principle. The, my problem is in the excess of the principle. And how are you going to balance between individual and community is by having ethics and rules and a vision. And Islam is providing us with this. I don't have a problem with, for example, reason with one uh, clear condition. Reason has to acknowledge the fact that there are limits to reason, mm. that there is something which is beyond. But to end up with the arrogance of rationality saying, Nothing else but reason. Say, no, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Because even my reason should understand that my heart gets some knowledge, that my body gets some knowledge. So we need to understand here that our critical discussion with modernity is a discussion about we might not have a problem with the principles, but we have a problem with the excesses. So for example, individualism or because of freedom, do whatever you want. There is no limitations, progress produce whatever you want and don't ask the goals. No, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. We have to question progress. We have to question the goals. Why are we putting so much money in things that are useless for humanity and not investing into education? Mm -hmm. And this is where we have to question this. So we don't have a problem with some of the principles. Mm -hmm. We might have a problem with some of the goals. But the, this seems, I mean, I, I think it's, it's valid. Right, but it seems to me that it is a position, um, a critical position, taken by Muslims within a modern setting or within a modernist type of a setting. You know, Muslims in the West, for example, or, or Muslims living in Western type of types of environments. Um, what about uh, Muslims outside of these environments? Because you find that, for example, in uh, you know, in, in, in different parts of the Muslim, the Muslim world, um, you find um, reason, for example, not given its due. You know, you find, for example, non-representative government. You know, you find uh, very narrow understandings of Islam that are unable to address itself to um, the forces that are impacting upon those very societies themselves. You find them, for example, adopting economic and social structures that are more um, applicable or more suitable for a non-Muslim environment. You know, take, for example, you know, uh, in energy-intensive means of production and so forth and so on. So is, is, this, is this dialogue, is this... Is this um, uh, criticism of, modern, of, of, of modernity you know, um, as a modern, uh, as a form of modernity itself. Um, is it limited to Muslims living in the Western world? No, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Of course, Western Muslims today are at the forefront of this discussion, the philosophical discussion and its translation. Uh, into, because very often Western Muslims are questioned about, okay, your belonging, your identity. Are you a modern or are you backward? Mm -hmm. do you, what do you want exactly? Do you want to, to deal with history or just to deal with the past and forgetting? So, so we really have this discussion in the West. But now you are talking about Muslim majority countries and you can see here that uh, uh, willing it or not, there is something today which is a dominant culture. Mm. And the dominant culture is translating modernists everywhere, from movies to education to economy to politics. We have to deal with this in Muslim majority countries. And we have some uh, answers coming from Muslims, which is only to catch up, to show that in fact, we are not in contradiction. We end up saying we don't have a problem with the dominant culture. I think that this is very, very dangerous, very, very, very. And this is why we have to question the notion of modernity by saying, look, it might be that what you are imposing onto us, it's not what we want. And that we have the means to an alternative way of dealing with modernity, through, uh, through new questions and, and goals, for example. And this is why I would like, uh, you know, we, we reduce Huntington to something which is a clash of civilizations. And, and, and in fact, he, he was deeper than what we summarized from. Mm. But he is saying something which is important. Coming from the Islamic civilization, and not only you can see this in 
also the Chinese, the true and sincere Confucianist tradition, not what it became now supporting capitalism and neo the neoliberal system. But coming from Islam, there is something which is important. Our civilization, our principles coming from Islam are by definition resisting this type of modernism. Mm. So I'm not going to waste my time to show that I don't, I don't have a problem. I would do exactly the opposite. I want to set myself as a Muslim questioning the whole system by saying, yes, I have a problem. And it starts not only with the way you deal with economy and politics, is the way you define human being, is the way you define when am I becoming a human being? What are you teaching me to become a human being? A consumerist or a conscient, a, 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 an aware, this awareness of having my principles? I'm, I'm the fitra, coming back to the fitra. And as Muslims, it's very important when you deal with human being by saying, you know, we are not, the, we don't have the ownership of this creation. We are here as vice-gerents. Mm. Meaning, and this is the very meaning of human being. When it starts with this, you come back, and this is echoing what the native Indians were saying to the colonizers centuries ago. You came to us, and we understood that we belong to the land. Mm. You think that the land belongs belong to you. To you. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. So you are questioning the very essence. If you don't do this at the beginning, if we as Muslims, we are obsessed with showing that we are modern, we are not questioning and we are just catching up. Say, so, okay, yes, we deal with the people. We are, uh, we are, as I am always saying, we end up Islamizing the means, but we are failing as to the goals. Right. We have to question the essence of everything. And with this, we don't have a problem with the challenges of modernity. If we start questioning this very essence of uh, who we are as human beings, accepting individuals, but understanding we don't have the ownership. So the concept of Khilafah is not what they are doing in Iraq mm. or in Syria, distorting the meanings of Islam. This mm. is the, the, the very essence of yes. Khilafah, vice chair right. on earth. And then you carry on with freedom, is this responsibility of being free. As is, in Islam, your freedom is not a right only, mm. it's a responsibility. Because right. we always start in Islam with our responsibility. Vicegerency means the first thing that you have to is understand on earth is respo your responsibility, not your rights. And this is where you come to modernism and you see this obsession of rights the rights to, to eat, the mm. rights to do so. It's the obsession of human rights, mm. not understanding what Gandhi was it's saying. It's almost, almost con consumerist in a sense. Exactly. What, am I, what is there out, uh, for me, you exactly. know, rather than what I should be giving to it, you. It's the mindset of the consumerist yeah. that is coming to the rights and the way you deal with humanity. Mm. And remember Gandhi, when he got the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, he said, responding when he got the draft, say, my mother taught me that when you have rights, you always start with your responsibilities, yeah. your duties. But it seems to me that modernity, um, how we've been talking about it, it is almost something negative. We're talking about uh, challenges of modernity, you know. We are talking about, um, you know, uh, reasserting the Islamic point of view, you know, not ac accepting things just the way they are and so on. What are the positive things about modernity that we could incorporate in ourselves? No, but that, that's a very important point in the way we talk about it. But if when you, 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 you are in the West, modernity is always something positive. It's a be modern. You have yeah. to be modern. The Muslim or the Islamic answer to this, oh no, this is the West and it's negative. And I think it's wrong. We, we, there is not a concept that is per se negative or per se positive. You need to take from it what mm. is positive. It's true that sometimes in our societies, Muslim majority countries, for example, this obsession of community doesn't give you a space where you are an individual right. questioning. It's you end up being a good Muslim because the people look at you as a good Muslim and not this sincere way. So you end up thinking more about the way you look and not the way you think. Mm. That's not 
right. So when you have people telling you, look, the right of the individual, I say, okay, that's good, we take it. Because we understand in Islam, al-hikmatu muslim is that the wisdom is the last property of the Muslim. So we take it. That's good. That's individual. And the right of the individual is, is important. But not to the point that you aren't, you are forgetting the community. Right. Not to the point that you, you, you end up being selfish in everything. That you are nurturing the consumerist mindset in mm -hmm. everything. So, so it's always balancing that there are something that are uh, good, good and, and things that are mm -hmm. bad. What we else is good? So, 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 for example, freedom, mm. freedom, right. that's true. Uh, once again, uh, well, what do you mean by we, freedom? Freedom to what? I mean, originally freedom, it meant freedom from, re from the dictates of religion or the freedom of conscience, for example. Yes, but that's, yes. For example, from an Islamic viewpoint, la ikraha fi din, no compulsion in religious matters. This is freedom that you can't. Are you going to, to impose unto people to believe? That's not of, none of your business. Mm -hmm. So freedom is the starting point of everything. It's part of the fitra. And we have to promote this. Why do we have to promote this? Because in many Muslim majority countries, look at what is happening in many Muslim majority countries, we are dealing with dictators. So if it means that my freedom, my spiritual freedom starts with the social freedom, the political freedom, the cultural freedom. We are for it. Mm -hmm. And we have to celebrate this. And I have to say something. I have to be, to be able to speak my mind. Who are you to prevent you from, to prevent me to speak my mind? Mm -hmm. When afdalul jihad, kalimatu haqqin amam sultan jahid, that the best jihad is to a, a word of truth in front of a dictator. What does it mean? Freedom. Mm -hmm. It means freedom. It means freedom and we have to celebrate this. So if modernity is helping us to, to get to this and, and to nurture this, this is where, once again, we take from other civilizations and we, it helps us to come back to some of our principles. Mm -hmm. But I would say that the added value that uh, the Muslims should bring into this discussion is we don't have, we don't have problem with history. We don't have to problem to rethink our legal tradition because this is ishtihad. And it has been done in the Shia tradition, in the Sunni tradition. We don't have a problem. We don't have a problem to deal with progress. We are ready to take everything which is good for humanity is ours. We are ready. But there are conditions, and the first one is always to ask, when you act, what is your intention? When you produce, what is your goal? Mm. What is your goal? Are you serving humanity or are you making money? Are you, and even with media, for example, we need media. We need to have, you know, people covering everything, but to do what? To do what? What do we want to do? To do uh, uh, this all this uh, uh, bad news that we have, covering everything which is bad, or to think about something which is giving dignity to what the people are trying to do. So, so it's all about this understanding of uh, modernity could be but a, a means. Religion, faith, spirituality, and philosophy is questioning the goals. Mm. Now, um, what about uh, those people who are anti modernity? You know, there are some people who think modernity is all a Western idea, it's about um, the Western way of life, you know, and it is something that has to be absolutely rejected. I, I think what, is that the, what is the errors of that particular type? What are that's a very good. That's thinking? a very good point because with, uh, I was once talking with somebody who was coming from the Sufi tradition, and saying, "No, no, no, no! Don't tell! Don't don't talk about modernity. This is a trap. You are going to fall to fall into the trap of the West. At the end, we have to resist this. The only thing that we have to do, and when we see that the world is changing, the best is isolate yourself from what the world is becoming and, and try to protect your spirituality." I can understand mm. this because it's very powerful. So they are resisting anything and, and reducing modernity. But at the end, we have to tell them, look, can you today deal with the world the way you were dealing in the seventh century? Is history, mm. is, it, is not history moving? You have to deal with this. Mm. This is Sunanullah. Mm. So it's, it's Allah's laws. Mm. He wanted this to happen. And he's telling you something that was said in the prophet's lifetime. When he was sending Mu'az ibn Jabal to Yemen, say, how are you going to deal with this new environment? The Quran, mm -hmm. a Sunnah, and then what? Your mind. Mm -hmm. So you have to use your mind to deal with new challenges. So we need to, have to understand that there are new challenges. Now, there is a difference between 
catching up with the dominant civilization or coming back to some of the principles to say, yes, we deal with time, we deal with you know, the universe, and you understand something that in the Quran it is said, by time the people are going towards their uh, 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 collapse, something mm. is, is deteriorating mm. within history, you know that. But we have the duty to deal with it, and we have the duty to make our mind and to come with some of the big questions, the, uh, the, 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 the big questions and the right answers. Mm. This is what we have to do. But this rejection of modernity as very bad per se, I think it's uh, an attitude towards the West, which is the rejection of the dominated. And you know something in coloni during the colonizing time, there's something which is very paradoxical, that you end up sometimes rejecting what is attracting you. Mm. So, so you see that uh, your emotions, your body is attracted, and say your mind say, no, 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 not there. This is where master your rejection by taking what is good and avoid being attracted by what is mm -hmm. bad, which is exactly the opposite of what the Muslim majority countries are doing today. We are taking from the West the worst things and forgetting the best right. things when it comes to what we were talking about, education, uh, uh, freedom, equality. These are principles that are ours. These mm. are not, we are alienated from our own values and we look at them as if they were coming from elsewhere. Do you think it's correct to say then that um, one of the most important characteristics of the modern Muslim is the awareness that he's living in this modern time and as a modern person, he has the right and the power to use the teachings of Islam, the principles and philosophy of Islam, to um, not only challenge what he might see as errors in modernism, but also to make life, the world, a better place in this modern time. This should be the, the mindset, this should be the attitude, is wherever you are, Whatever, whenever you live in history, there is something that you have to take as it is, which is exactly what the Prophet, peace upon him, uh, was doing. He says he came to Mecca, he came to Medina, he looked at the, the, the world the way it was, so, okay, from here I start. This is exactly what we have mm. to do. But not by trying to deal with the world the way it is. We have a duty, a double duty. You change yourself, you change the world. And sometimes the first struggle is intellectual. Remember that the first occurrence of jihad in the Quran is about with the Quran. The Quran is your weapon. In, when it comes to modernity, the weapon is our mind, not our weapons. Great point to end our mm. beautiful discussion. Sadly, we are out of time. And I would like to thank Professor Ramadan and of course all of you at home for watching. And until next time and another edition of Islamic Awakening, it's a goodbye from me and the whole team.